Be happy, but never satisfied. Better than ever. We are live in Chateau Gay, Quebec for C4UC. Hi, my name is Etienne Fournier. We'll have the great privilege of hosting this live webcast C4UC Canadian Ultimate Championship four on four. And I will have the immense privilege of sharing the mic with another legend of this sport, Devin Asmota. Thank you, Devin, for being with us today. Thank you, Etienne. This is Devon also coming in. Um, we have a great match today. We get to watch some of Canada's finest juniors playing this tournament today. So we have Canyon coming out of uh, North Vancouver, and we have versus Newfoundland Storm coming out of uh, St. John's, Newfoundland. Newfoundland facing off British Columbia. How much more Canadian can that be? Tr a true East Coast versus West Coast matchup. And that's another reason to be excited for this upcoming game. So Kane Canyon from BC wearing the dark jerseys while Storm from Newfoundland, which will start on the right hand side of your screen, will be wearing the light jerseys. Yes, and just for the viewers at home right now, we are in pool play. This is each team's first game of the day. And essentially, they're in a pool of four with OJ Cup from Ottawa and Quick Noir from Quebec City. So we will see... Uh, who gets the early start to the day? And just before the game, I was chatting with uh, Katie, one of the, the two coach from uh, from a can for Canyon. And uh, she was, uh, I asked her, well, who should we say hi to for this broadcast? And well, there's too many people to say hi to. So let's put it in this way. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. It will be a fun game. Either you're a parent, a close relative, a mother, a dad, a grandfather, a granddaughter, whatever. Welcome. Yes, and that was just a quick drop from Kepunzitski from Canyon there. And Storm wasting no time here, just working it, trying to work it up. Great backhand, but out of reach. An attempt of greatest, but it was cut out of bound. Quick transition by Canyon. Pass and run midfield. Great flick, but it was blocked. And that's well anticipated Jackson. by number nine. So we just hear the warn, but we've already engaged into this game. So excited we started earlier. Looks there's like a there's a call here. It looks like uh, a calling travel. a travel. And for the fans at home, essentially in ultimate, you have to set your pivot foot and you can't let it move uh, while you have the disc. So number seven, they're just calling a travel, saying your pivot foot was sliding. Turnover for Canyon. Quick dish. Was that cut in? Yes, it was. First point of the game. Canyon taking a short one point lead. Yes, and that was Krita Kapuzinski. Uh, looked like he dropped the dish really fast after that. Um, but everyone on the field being okay with calling it a goal. So, for those who are less familiar with the rules of the game, it is a self-officiated sport, so there's no referee. All athletes are acting as the referee. With nice layout, but just felt a little short. Yeah, very nice attempt by LeDrew there just to save it. And Canyon wastes no time capitalizing it. It's Morissette to uh, Calwert uh, for the goal there. And it's a break point by Canyon taking a quick two-point lead early in this game. We will be playing for 50 minutes with a halftime break of approximately two minutes. 
And a one bit. pass, one point. She's being called not in from the end zone by the Canyon player. So just a little short of the point, but what a great pass. Great throw there to start the point. Of course, back in Coffin stuck along the sideline. Going flip to reset. It's a floated to this. Tons of pressure. What great control by the Storm player. Coffin attacking the ends, but miscued Canyon threatening to score a second break point in this game. That's a nice layout. Huge out. layout there. Wow. I love a little layout D to start off a game. Great chat. Taking one for the team. It's always spectacular layout, but landings are often hard. And it looks like just a few nerves from Storm starting out the game. You know, it's the first game of the day. Maybe a little predictable for juniors. Um, a great cut. A great, great uh, pivot. Worked by number seven, but miscued for the pass. Yeah, for the people watching at home who aren't used to form for ultimate, you're going to see a lot of those seven cuts. So a lot of attacking one corner, and then immediately slashing to the other side of the field. Chipman can't get a hold on this pass. Counter by Canyon. Number seven, Kai Creed, acting as the quarterback. Nice break. Oh, great anticipation by Kara Chipman. Yeah. She might have dropped the last pass, but she's a... Uh, Redeeming herself by a great defense. Yeah, and one thing the Storm team is doing right now is they are putting on the defensive pressure. Like, there are some miscues like that there, but they're working hard after the turn to get the disc back. And here's the point for Canyon. And that's Creed to Muirhead there. Uh, racking up the stats for this team, they go up 3 nothing now, Etienne. That's an amazing start by... The BC representative. Let's see how Storm respond to this. Three points. Long pass. It's floating. Well cut. Well read by number nine, Montag. Granting Storm their first point of the game. Still trailing by two. Yeah, Montague with the great awareness there to keep his feet inbound while he was just jumping so high in the air. Great for Storm to put them on the board now. And... Uh, We'll see if they can get a break here to, you know, make the score a little closer. Nice layout. That was cut in. Number seven, Kai Creed. Just landing right in front of us. And believe me, there is a ton of intensity on the field right now. Maybe a little, a little over excitement, maybe, explaining those few miscues we've seen so far. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Especially in junior sometimes, you do get a little amped up, and uh, it's hard to rein it in, but we do love the excitement. And then you get fun throws like that, a little, you know, high-release push pass. <laughs> Kapuscinski being creative with the disc. You know, as they say, any complete pass is a good pass, but sometimes it's hard on, on the coaching staff to see those kinds of passes. Yes, exactly. Uh, some coaches might not be a fan, but uh, it definitely looks like the junior players are a fan of that. Storm attempting once again the one pass for the point, but a little miscued. Canyon. Long pass. It's out of bound, and we try to push it back, but it was without any doubt a pass out of bound by Noah Culworth. It will be put back into play approximately midfield. And I well, it was touch on defense, so we're putting it back at the goal line. Yes, it should have been brought back to midfield, but, you know, like you said, self-officiated sport. So they're going to do what people on the field agree with. And now just a little inside shot that went too far out of bounds. Jane Aris with a nice read of the field with a great break pass, but out of bounds. Once again, Kenyon. Just on the goal line, finding number 31 in the Kenyan squad, scoring and their fourth point. Now it's 4-1 to one for the Dark Jerseys. Yeah, and that uh, that score really was started by that nice OI flick by Outerbridge just to continue, uh, just to continue the play. Storm trailing by three early in this first half. 
Nice focus by number 12. Quickly feeding Ben Pritchett for Storm's second point of the game. It's 42 for Canyon. Yeah, and one thing Storm's doing a really good job of right now is they're not doing the same offensive look. You see them starting in a host stack, in a vertical stack, in a diagonal stack. They're really like giving Canyon a lot of different offensive looks so no one's getting used to how they're initiating. Modisets Pat being intercepted. Sneaky Scuber on the other side, but well read and blocked by Morissette to take put the dicks back into play. What a sweet layout by number 32. Outer bridge. Wow, another layout on defense by number nine. Wow. That's the thing you love about juniors. They're not scared to throw their bodies around like you know. Uh, some people in the adult division. So that makes for some even more exciting games um, with all the changes of possession. It's now number six, Power, with the disc, but with the pass a little too strong, landing out of bound. Yeah, and Power, you know, a strong, confident handler. One of the returners from the Storm team that came fourth at this championship last year. So they're going to look to her a lot to make some place to, you know, get the team back in the game. Like, just down a few points already. Morissette squeezing in the end zone, catching the disc for Kenyon. Fifth point of the game, still leading by three. Wow. What an exciting game so far. Oh, so exciting. There's been so many plays, so many layouts, and I'm sure more to come. Terrio with the disc, feeding Harris. Harris, great fake. But, oh, what a great defense. Still another Layout bid, resulting in a block. Kenyon, nice back and forth cutting by number seven. Kai Creed, granting his team their seventh point of the game, or their sixth point, I should say. And at the end, what do you think about uh, Coach uh, Blake and Katie there with the sunglasses on, you know, looking a little men in black over there? Well, it's all about the attitude, you know. When you're a coach and when you're, your team has so much energy, they're just enlightening the side. That's why you have to be careful with your eyes and wear your sunglasses. Oh, yeah, for sure. All of these all-star plays, I'd wear some sunglasses too. Great anticipation and that's from number one, Kishka, Kishkaran. Great disc movement going from the right-hand side of the field towards the left-hand side. Sneaky flick. That was not caught in. Out of bounds. Definitely an attempt to jump in that didn't go as he planned. And Keskaran offering herself as a great target in the end zone. And it's another Kenyan point leading 8 to 2. All right. And we have C Storm calling the first timeout of the game down 8 to 2. So, Devon, so far we have seen a ton of exciting plays. I don't know how many layouts have we seen, both on offense and on defense. We've seen great passes. We have seen also a couple of miscues, maybe due to the over, over-energized over player. They have already played at least, that, that I believe that will be this their is the second first, This game. is the first game of the day, the actually. The first game yeah. of the day. Oh, maybe that's why. They that's are overwhelmed why. with energy. Yeah, so both of these teams do have some experience playing together. It's not like it's their first time meeting. You see Canyon from North Vancouver. They run a winter development program. So these are players that get to play with each other regularly. And the team even came to this tournament last year, got some experience, didn't have the finish that they thought, but still just a growing program out of that North Vancouver area. And same thing for Storm. Um, they've been, they also have a winter development program uh, coming out of like the Newfoundland. And so they get to also play with each other regularly. And attending an adult tournament earlier this season to get that chemistry so i'm sure this timeout is just telling the players settle down play our game six points isn't a huge deficit in the four on four world you uh viewers at home have probably seen how quickly these points can end so look to storm to make some calmer plays and um get back into this game just you know one point at a time there's still a lot of ultimate to be played in that game Storm with the disc. Holder going long. Floaty, but denied by Creed. Blocking that pass. Creed getting all over the stat sheets this game. Um, 
making some Ds, throwing some assists, some goals. Canyon with a quick transition, and guess who made the score? Creed. Once again, not only is he making the defense, but he's also making the point. So double happiness. For double Kai happiness. Creed. Call that bookends. Um, pretty amped. So now Storm, Storm switching up now, going for a box initiation. Uh, so you're probably going to see that handler strike up line to make some space. Oh, and foul called on the catch. So number eight. So Ethan Brace will retain that disc. Storm at their own goal line. Great one hand grab by LeDru. Quickly putting it on the other side, but it's blocked by number 87, Calaward. Great deep by Calaward there. Nice awareness for the floaty hammer. But unfortunately, that uh, conservation of greatness, you make a great D, so hyped, and then the turnover that comes after. Nice pass sideways to Terrio. Terrio. On the sideline, resetting, but tons of one-to-one -to -one pressure by Canyon. Faking the hammer, holding it back, goes for the hammer, but oh, just out of reach of Terry, who gave it all to try to catch it, but it's just landing. And Terry doing a, trying to make a great play there. You do need one point of contact inbound, so you saw him jump and try to keep the toes down. And great throw by uh, Outerbridge to start again, but just a little too far for the receiver. Great anticipation by Terry. Storm with the disc at their own goal line, going hammer, cross court, but the lands on the ground, unfortunately. So Kenyon will take it back at their own goal line. Outerbridge will put the disc back into play. Miscued to Kesh Keran. Storm will have an opportunity less than 10 yards so on the see, goal line. So you see Storm doing the good thing, isolating one player just so you have enough space to clear it out to make passes like that. Just a little miscue, but Storm's doing all the right things right now that you want to see from a team down, you know, giving each other space. It's just misexecuting some stro some throws right now. They have the skills. They have the talent. We just need a little more precision. Keskaran on the goal line, dishing it. To number 87, Callaway Canyon winning that point, which I believe was the longest point of the game so far. Yes, this is definitely, this is, I think, not the point from the timeout, but a few turns in this point now, and uh, out of bridge finally getting cash around, and then just easy point in the end zone. So another box initiation here from Storm. Um, let's see if they can convert through this initiation play. And I would like to take uh, maybe this moment to be uh, to thank all the parents and the volunteer who made these uh, these two teams uh, being able to come to play here in Chateauguay, just southwest of Montreal. There was some uh, lots of logistic and some uh, money raising, more likely, to uh, give these uh, all these athletes a great opportunity to compete at the national level. So, thank. To all the parents who uh, sold chocolate at the <laughs> office, <laughs> we did some uh, money raising activities like the, the classic bowling yeah. evening or selling tickets for whatever double double. So yeah, and I was uh, I had the opportunity to work with Ignite, uh, being alongside their coaching staff for last summer, and you can just see the amount of support they get from the parents, whether it's like filling water bottles, whether it's food. So definitely a lot of behind the scenes work that we have to thank. Back to the game now. A great D coming from Calwart to uh, give possession back to Canyon. And he's going to tap it in. And that is Keshkaran with another uh, point to put on the board. Oh, I think there was a travel call. So you can be called a travel whenever you move your pivot foot or maybe when you put the disc back into play, but your foot is still outside of the field. Yes. Definitely, you have to set that pivot foot just inside the field and keep it planted. So, Devon, how long do players have to put the disc back into play? How, how much tall should the, the defender can uh, can count? So, in ultimate, uh, indoors and outdoors, you have 10 stalls. So, essentially 10 seam bolts that you might be familiar with from American football. But 10 stalls, stall 1, stall 2, up to 10. And then it's a stall down, the T of 10, very particular. 
But the thing is, a lot of uh, players get they get a little antsy, so they start counting faster once they get to like six or seven, and then a lot of fast counts get called. But great grab there by Brace. Amazing grab from the hot inside from Terrio. And Terrio catching it cross side after a nice and clean, very angle flick from Brace. Yeah, he definitely got all of that inside flick shot there and putting a storm back on the board. The score is 12 to 3 in favor of the Canyon squad from British Columbia. Nice up the line cut and pass. Hammer cross field on the sideways. Nice little reset. Tons of traffic resulting in a great block by number 12. Yeah, Fancy just getting uh, her hand in there, but unfortunately, miscue giving Canyon another chance to uh, end this possession. Nice pass and run led by number 32, Outerbridge. She's dishing it back, attacking the end zone. Oh, great read on defense by number five from the Storm squad. Pritchett, great anticipation. Storm with an opportunity of scoring a break point. Number 12, Fancy with the disc, looking for an option. Finds her teammate, number 44, Chipman, midfield. Chipman wanted to reach out for Pritchett, but well anticipated by number 34 with a great defense. Once again, Outerbridge with the disc, licking it. What a great pass. Wow, have you seen that angle? Very well measured. Just chirurgical pass. Yeah, and that's one of the great things about uh, playing indoor ultimate. It's just there's no wind. So it's really you can throw throws like that straight up at that angle, uh, and they work out. There's no wind to punish you. Turnover okay. against Storm. Nice defense by number nine. Who's winning that aerial battle? Yeah, we're seeing a really fun matchup between Montague and Creed right now. Um, both two athletic players, high jumpers, and uh, it's really nice when their teammates, you know, try to challenge that matchup. Like he's calling for it right now. Miss Q, the power was not able to handle that pass. Canyon threatening with Creed with the disc. Great fake. By the left hander, number six, O'Reilly. Yeah, and that turnover was really forced by Hodder there. Great mark taking away the open side to help out his defender, forcing a tougher break side throw and then the miscue from there. So you can influence the, the play all along the field. Going long, just a slightly out of reach of Neville. Medellin Neville will be another Kenyan possession, and that's, I believe, the second longest point we've seen so far in that game. Yeah, and you saw someone asking for a timeout there, but them just playing through it. Creed with the disc. No mark, no count. No count. Another block by Storm. Creed, great, great defense here. Creed just getting a bit greedy there on the inside shot. It was a tight window. Sometimes you can hit it, sometimes you can't. Um... Benefiting Storm with another chance to get on the board here. Power. Finding Neville. Neville along the sideline looking for an answer. Tight defense once again by O'Reilly. O'Reilly from his left hand. Finding Creed. That dishes it. Maybe a, quick, a second too quick to Mugiset landing in a... Turnover, another turnover. Power could not handle that pass. Canyon threatening on the goal line. Looking for a reset. Tons of traffic, but find a way to reset midfield. Creed just with a low release flick. Great throw, but out of reach of the intended receiver number two. You can tell Creed's been in the lab working on the inside flick. He's really trying to get it off right now. Um... 
And I'm sure, like, keep attempting throws like that, and he'll get it. Just another miscue here from Storm, not putting that deep strike far enough. And then you have the opposite problem here with the Canyon putting it too far out of reach. So the point is getting longer. The players are getting more tired. Even though, do you get do you ever get tired when you're junior, or Devon? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think juniors so. are allowed to get tired. No, they're not allowed to get tired. I, I wasn't. They haven't been alive concept. long enough to be tired. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? Another turnover with this point. Him. Creed to O'Reilly. Nice pass and run. Continuation. A pass. Oh, there was some bumping, but no harm's done. And here we are with the point scored by Jeanette Murhead. And I think that, I think that, she's oh, that was called out of not bounds. in bounds. Right. I was a little too optimistic, but oh, unfortunate miscued. Great intention, but just a split second miscued. Power yeah. will put the disc back into play. And you're going to see those happen a little more right now because this has been a very, very long point for these juniors. Even though they don't get tired, I think they might be a little more tired here. Uh, I, I suspect they're getting tired. Maybe I'm not allowed to say that, but O'Reilly, another great interception by number six, feeding Creed. Did he caught that in? I, yes. So that will conclude that marathon point in favor of the BC squad. Canyon leading 14 to 3 in this first half. Yeah, and Storm now uh, trying a bit of a uh, diagonal vertical stack. Um, they get that clear out from the front. Just a little different initiation to get some flow started. We are almost at the end of the first half. You should hear the blown horn in less than a minute or so. While Storm still... I wonder what the score is, Etienne. I believe it's 14-3. That's what our, 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 our all of our team keeping the score is telling me, at least. Yes. I believe it makes sense. Here we are, hearing the, blow, the, the horn blow, signaling the end of this first half. Yes. So the rule is the minute you hear the horn, the point stops unless we are at the end of the game and we have a tie game. So, Devon, your impression on this first half? My impression is, you know, this Canadian team that came eighth at Nationals last season, they're not going to come eighth this year. You can tell they've been an improved squad. There's so much defensive pressure you know, you've see, you see, we started out the game with a lot of layouts and those kind of have stopped on defense, but there's just so much pressure. Storm's really having trouble connecting those passes. And it's because like pressure builds throughout the game. You know, you're you're laying out on the first few points. And now uh, when people are catching things, they're thinking, oh, my gosh, I have to attack this disc. And even when you're throwing, you're like, oh, I need to lead my receiver even more because the pressure's right there. So credit to the uh, Canyon coaches for coming out with a game plan to shut down Storm's big initiations. And then on the other side from Storm, you just see a team that's going to have to get their rhythm in. First game of the tournament, they're just going to have to get the feet going, get the execution higher, and that's kind of the key to the game to get them in. What about you, Etienne? Any thoughts? Well, I believe that Storm have shown a lot of, uh, they have displayed a lot of athleticism and a lot of skills. It's all about, you know, those split-second decisions. Sometimes you do your pass a little too far away or a little too short. A little too quick, you know, just settle once you have the possession of the, 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 the disc and make sure to complete your pass. You, you want to play gutsy, you want to play hard, but also you need to play smart. And at this point, I think they have all the skill sets. It's all about, you know, a little execution. And I'm more likely, I suspect, that's what the uh, Storm coach is uh, talking about right now because, you know, uh, defensive why they, they are able to turn the disc around. Uh, and But it's just... We need to convert now. Yeah, especially. And also, like, uh, even Storm to come out here, you can tell they have some support here. They have two adult teams watching them, cheering them on. Um, you have uh, Little Joe, which is a younger group of Newfoundland adult people. And do you know the name of the senior team that's also playing in this tournament? Uh, I don't have the name of the senior team, but that's something I'm pretty sure we can find very, very quickly. 
I have a Lil Joe and mm, I don't have the, the name of the other team. But nonetheless, it's a great representation from uh, uh, like, like Newfoundland. And there's also a team from Saskatoon that we've seen. We've seen it, there's a team from the Northwest Territory. How amazing. They're based out of Yellowknife. They have a few uh, pickup players based out of Ottawa. But how, how exciting it is. And that's one. The, the, our last assignment today will feature two teams from the senior division. Uh, that will face off a team based out of Newfoundland playing against Northwest Territory. I mean, I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm excited just to talk about it. Yeah, another, you know, true coast-to-coast -coast matchup. Uh, Ultimate Canada seemed to get lucky with the way the schedule came. But back to the game now here. Um, Storm down 14-3 to here. Might be a little out of reach to pull this game back in, but what you can focus on here is... Let's get the good habits that are going to carry us for the rest of our pool play games. And that's something that is in Storm's control, right? Obviously. So we are in Chateau Gay, just southwest of the island of Montreal. Oh, we're not in Montreal? We are not in Montreal. We are just on the south shore of Montreal. I guess the greater Montreal area, we can say. I guess we can say that. So uh, how many times have you been to the city, at the end? Because yeah. it's my first. Not many times. But I know, I know a little bit of the south shore. But it's a great facilities. It's the Beau Chateau Sports Complex, which you know it's it feels like it's all I'll still smell a, a, a new building, you know. So uh, beautiful facilities, and there's a ton of activities outside of what we're seeing. There's I know that I've seen some tennis on the other side. I've seen some soccer. There's a ton of kids being very very active on this beautiful Saturday morning here in Chateau Gay. C4 UC, nice hand block. By Kapuzinski on Coffin's high release backhand there. Again, that canyon pressure continues, just not even in the lanes now on the mark. Storm putting the disc back into play. Stall is going high, but still we're resetting. Great one to one defense by Canyon, putting a ton of pressure on the Storm. Great grab by Coffin. He ensured to stay in down. Number 12. Fancy dishing it, but now it's Coffin. You cannot. There was some, uh, some bumping, incidental bumping. So Coffin's calling a foul. And it will not be contested. Yeah, so the way Ultima works is you, every time, deserve a clear path to catching the disc. So Coffin just calling the foul there because he felt that... Uh, Kapuzinski impeded his ability to catch that disc cleanly. But turnover nonetheless. And uh, um, sorry, Canyon back on the attack right now. Kapuzinski, great pass and run. Creed. Oh, that was a great intention. It was a nice German positioning. Well, you just have to put the disc in the space. But it was a little too much or not enough love in the throw. A little too much power. Yeah. You need to put the love sometimes. And that's something that's still going to happen once you get to the adult division. But definitely juniors are learning, you know, how much touch and how much love to put on these discs. Like, not being able to float that disc perfectly or even uh, if that was the right decision, right? Those are some things that kind of evolve the longer you play, the more you play in the senior division. But, again, such so much talent there. Like, you know, Creed elevating for the score there, for the grab there. And just uh, calmly working his way to a reset in the end zone here. Kapuscinski catching the disc in the end zone for Canyon 15 point. Devon, I'd like, I'd like to hear you. Uh, you know, last fall we we uh, we webcast some games at the University Canadian Championship, uh, and you're like you're like a rock star in the University uh, series. Everybody knows you. You know everybody. So can we do a parallel like the junior and after that the the, the University series when you attend a national championship like the Everything, the experience you can learn uh, of playing at a national level. What's your what's your insights on that? Yeah, it's really cool for these juniors because a lot of juniors, like most people interact with Frisbee at, you know, sometime in high school. So maybe grade nine or grade 10. So it's like you're only in the sport for a couple of years and now you're at a national championship. And all of a sudden everything's so new, everything's so shiny. So a lot of these uh, junior players, they get to experience seven on seven where it's like a big team, big field nationals where... It's very tiered, right? You do have like a top eight 
a middle eight and a bottom eight in the in the open division, and uh, I think just 16 teams in the women's division. Uh, so, yeah, this is a great opportunity because now you have a, a little more bunching, you know, just eight teams. So coming out to Junior Nationals here, you get touches, you get reps, you get uh, experience guarding the best players, you get experience, like, throwing to, against the best players. And when you move into university, it's like uh, now it's, again, you're with people of the same age group. So all these juniors are in between, uh, I believe, like 13 is the minimum, it's 13 and 18, so five-year gap. And same thing in university, you're kind of commonly in between 18 to 22-year-olds. And then in the adult division, that's where you see a 19-year-old having to guard a 37-year-old. So that's a bit of the difference in the experiences, just like some age gap differences and experience gaps there. So while you were sharing your, your insights, uh, there was a couple of very, very athletic moves from both of the teams. A couple of turn of uh, turnovers also, some uh, great blocks, some great verticals. And now there seems that there was a call, it was a pick call. I think there was a pick call because it was on the person who caught the disc. Um, I believe it's a turnover. So the way picks rules work is um, if a pick happens, you still have to, like, catch it and, uh, you know, uh, like, complete the play, and then the disc can go back. But because you saw she turned the disc over after the pick was called, play is still live, so the turnover still stands, unfortunately. So whatever in doubt, catch the disc. Yeah, but great uh, rules and knowledge used from these juniors, uh, knowing that there's a turnover happening. Another pick call. And Creed. the way this pick rules works is because Creed felt like he could have caught up to Terrio before he caught the disc, now the disc is going to go back. Because, again, in Ultimate, you deserve a straight line path to your defender. So whenever someone impedes you, that's when you can call a pick. Terrio with a great inside cut. Hammers it at the opposite corner. But, oh, it was... a. Uh, I guess uh, the number 18 from a storm race wanted to ensure that it was a tiptoeing inside. So last sight of the disc for a split second, but great effort. And it's another turnover storm back with the possession. Yeah, that was Brace. a great, that was a great hammer by Terrio there. Um, might be looking for more here from brace. And Brace there putting it. Is. it. That's what Terrio wanted. Great fighting in the air. But I think there was a foul call. And it looks like, uh, I think it's a strip. So it might be a goal now. They're just talking it over. It's a tough disc to read. You know, it comes from behind your, your head. You have to look upward. You have like that Creed guy just putting you a, a gazillion ton of pressure behind you. Still need to focus on the disc. So great effort by Terrio. Now they're still discussing to see if it will be a contested foul or not. All right. So it looks like they are going to be contesting it. I think what happened there to explain to the viewers, Terrio called a foul, called a foul on uh, number seven Creed there because he felt like Creed impacted his ability to catch that disc. And uh, they had a little discussion or a, a bit of a lengthy discussion and it, seems like they decided that you know what i think i didn't foul you you think i fouled you we're gonna just send it back to where we can agree on the play and that is um back to brace but quick turn over here for canyon now to capitalize on creed will put the disc back into play resetting to outer bridge turn over tell you quickly to 11 le Drew. Brace now with the disc, midfield, looking for something deep with an ambitious flick, blady flick, that unfortunately lands out of bounds. And that's another thing uh, of the junior division. You know, you saw, you saw Brace there really locking on the end zone and want to throw that instead of looking for a reset. Um, so something that Storm will want to work on as they go through the tournament, just being able to keep the disc alive for longer. There was just a small window to make that flick, and Creed successfully finds Outer Bridge. Now we're discussing did Outer Bridge cut it inbound or on the line? And with a push pass, Outer Bridge feeding 
Kapuscinski for Kenyan's 17th point of the game. Yeah, and Kapuscinski with a the spike there. You can tell he's really excited, very animated to be putting more points on the board. Um, and Kenyan just still executing at a high level and uh, starting to run away with this game, really. So Kenyan being in the driver's seat so far of this game. Storm looking for some momentum. And see, great grab lay out for the point for Storm. Wow. Yeah. What a gutsy hammer, but what a gutsy catch from number six, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was Pritchett, uh, number five. Number five. Yeah, so great hammer there. You know, Storm's down a few points. They're going to have to take shots like this if they want to get back into the game. And, you know, what, what a way to energize your team than a big layout like that. Kapuscinski tried to catch that disc with his left hand, but it just rolled out of his hand. Storm with the disc, but great defense by Creed. And again, this Montague-Creed matchup. Number nine, Montag and Creed. What a great matchup, as you mentioned, Levon. Two great athletes fighting hard. Nice pass, but just... Just out of reach, unfortunately, of number 12, Claire Fancy. Or I should say number 12, Sarah O'Reilly. Number two, Madeline Neville tried to catch that disc inbound, but it, not only did it roll out of her hand, but I believe she was out of bounds. It's still, nonetheless, a great effort. But meanwhile, it's number 12, Sarah O'Reilly catching with one hand that disc in the end zone. That's Kenyon's 18th point of the game. Yeah, and the big difference right now is Storm, they're getting open, you know. Yeah, their players are getting open under against these Kenyon defenders. It's just a bit of the, the catching there and a bit of the execution leading, leading them inbounds and uh, making it an easier grab on the offensive players. We are entering the 40th minute of this game, intended to last 50 minutes. So about 10 minutes left. I think, realistically speaking, Devon trailing by 14 points with less than 10 minutes. It's not impossible, it is but it's very ambitious. Mathematically not impossible. Etienne, I know you do a lot of numbers in your day-to-day 9-to-5 life. Uh, how many points a minute are we going to need to for Storm to catch up? too much like too, too complicated for my brain to compute right now but it's a lot it's a lot whole number division only I would, I would summarize this as being very very ambitious all right can you hear pack on the attack uh, after a couple of miscues from storm here great grab by number 34 i think that's ford kelsey wow just laying it out and it seems like no, no harms at all. It seems very, very easy, but it hurts. It Whenever hurts. You're lying out, it hurts. It hurts, but for Kelsey is in pants, you know, protecting the knees a little bit. I am personally not a pants wearer in any form of ultimate, unless it's like, you know, zero degrees outside university series. But I think indoors, there's no place for pants. Get in the shorts. Take those off. Storm with the disc. Fighting hard. Well, there's less than 10 minutes to be played in the game. Great defense by Keshkaran. Yeah, Coffin trying to hit uh, Fancy there and uh, just a little miscue. And Kenyon again just executing so well, attacking the end zone so quickly. I just love O'Reilly. Whenever he has the disc, I mean, like he's so smooth. He takes the time, like he's scanning the plays, whatever's happening. I just like his smoothness. Into the way he handles it. Yeah, I see what you mean. Very fluid handler there. Yep. So we are now into our second of four assignment for today. So our next appointment will be at 12.30 Eastern time for another junior matchup featuring Chain Reaction from Ontario. We'll be facing up against Team Manitoba. Another typical Canadian championship game.
here in Chateauguay, Quebec. Yeah, a little closer. You have the Ontario versus Manitoba matchup. Chain reaction coming out of Durham region, my home area, Etienne, where I started playing Frisbee. Uh, it wasn't called Chain Reaction when I played. I played when it was still stud on the open side and Night Fury on the girl side, but I was a stud alumni. So looking forward to go visit the, the statue they will be raising for you. But in oh. the meantime, what a great grab. Great that grab there by LeDrew. Unfortunately, not called in, but she's still going up. Not oh, a layout. A double layout attempt. You really wanted it for her there. Oh, she is upset, but what a great effort nonetheless. I mean, she worked so hard. Turnover in favor in, of Canyon. We are in the last minute of this second half creed with the disc along the sideline. Great disc movement. One, two, three, four, and score. Yeah, that's Muirhead to Outer Bridge there. Um, a little female to female connection on this mix four and four. That's another thing we haven't talked about. Uh, the gender ratio for this uh, for this tournament it is two girls, two boys on the field in the junior division, two open to uh, women matching players in the senior division. Uh, really good for gender equity and giving everyone touches on the field. Number twelve, fancy fitting coffin. Great pivot work, resetting, but miscuing. Well, miscue from Coffin and Chipman. And quickly. Coffin trying to get on defense, but Canyon just uh, Canyon just too clinical at this point in the game, and you see some some frustration from these Storm players again from those little miscues. I just thought that with Canyon, just like they they counter attack when there's a turnover, bang, they're exploding, and that's one thing you need to learn. You know, either as a junior or a senior, whenever you lose possession, you need to put the switch. On defense, like right away. Don't think about it. Just play defense. Yeah, um, and uh, like from the mental performance aspect, you call that next play mentality. How quickly can you start focusing on the next play, especially after you make a mistake in those sports where you play offense and defense right away? Great attempt along the sideline, but miscue. There was a ton of traffic down that path. And I think right here you have um, you have over, Devin O'Reilly calling a dangerous play on Montague, trying to explain himself how he felt like Montague didn't take a safe path to that disc. And again, self-officiated sport. So it looks like he got to express himself to Montague, and they're going to contest the play, and uh, it will be going back to the Canyon player. Young with the disc. Great flick for reset to Creed. Young, once again, safely resets to Creed. Pass and run. O'Reilly, great flick from the left-hander, finding Creed in the corner, providing Canyon their 24th point of the game. Yeah, with just a few minutes left, five minutes left in the game, um, I really want to see, you know, Storm execute some short passes and work it up into the end zone right now. They've they've missed on a lot of far away shots to the end zone, and let's see them try to work it in. And let's give some credit to Canyon's one-to-one uh, -one defense, which has been, let's say, suffocating. Oh, see, what, oh great grab by Terrio. Wow, he landed so smoothly. Lost his cap. Cleared for takeoff. Great movement by Storm. See, they can do it. A it's little work it in there. You saw LeDrew. Yeah, you saw LeDrew there who had the great layouts a couple points ago. Um, catch the disc and work it easily into brace. And look at that Storm on the board again. They are not giving up. They will fight until the end. That's what you want. Canadian Championship. You're here to fight. You're here to play. Yeah, and especially when uh, some of these pools like might be decided on point differential. So every point does matter in a sense. Storm and getting you back. Point. Coffin with a huge D there in the end zone. Coffin that made some great D throughout all the game. Coffin once again inside. 
defended by O'Reilly. Another great match and great grab. Did it touch the ground? Um, yes. I, I, you saw Kabuzinski there looking at the teammates, looking at the crowd, and a clear up call there. Great layout from uh, great layout from Pritchett to keep the play alive. It's not his first layout to save the disc. He made one just down the, the, the end zone earlier in the game. Fancy Chipman. there with a nice inside to Chapman. Yeah, to Chipman. Now Coffin looking for a target going long, but out of bounds. Tapushinsky resetting to O'Reilly. Smooth, long pass, but no, a little too high, a little too long. Yeah, but Riley. The target just, was there. Yeah, Riley just uh, looking for too much in that on that inside. And now we have uh, Pritchett working it into Coffin again. About ninety seconds remaining in the game. Oh, that was very close to. A potential Cal uh, Callahan, but great defense by Kapuscinski. Nice one-hand grab by O'Reilly after this break pass. Another point for Canyon. So Storm, which can potentially be the last point of the game. Yes, and uh, so the horn will sound at 50 minutes, and then play will stop. The only time it plays through the horn is when it's tied, um, so it's, it'll be a universe point, but only a couple minutes left. And see, Canyon's still bidding on every possession, wanting every point of this game. Great layout grab by Montagu. Providing Storm their sixth point of the game. Still fighting until the end. Yeah, Storm really not giving up here toward the end of the game. You know, Newfoundland strong, really proud, and showing uh, the viewers at home that they uh, they flew out here for a reason. It might yeah, have been a, a rough indeed. start to the tournament, but, like, you know, they have two more games to play in pool play. You never know what's going to happen. Who knows? You have to play those games. Creed to O'Reilly. Nice pass and run. Outer bridge. Creed, out of bridge again. O'Reilly. Like these three players having amazing chemistry on the field. Let's not forget about Murhead. who still wander around, offering yourselves as a target. But so far, our three teammates are doing an amazing job. She's still there. O'Reilly finding Creed, who jumps inbound. For another Canyon's point. Yeah, and Creed has been really impressive throughout this entire game, just with the throws, with the defense, even catching goals like that, too. Uh, very athletic player uh, who's Canyon's going to have to gonna lean on as they keep going through this tournament, right? Coffin. And we hear the horn signaling the end of the game. So Canyon from British Columbia winning over Storm from Newfoundland in this junior division pool play game. So Devon, your impression on the game? Impression. What can we expect from these two teams in the uh, upcoming, uh, well, what's what the, the rest of the day and uh, the, the, the this national championship output? Yeah, impressive, impressive uh, start for Canyon. I know they are seated uh, lower in this tournament, but look for them to raise that, raise that seating throughout. You saw a lot of like, Athletic plays on defense, smart, calculated shots on offense, great chemistry working with each other, and that's only going to get better working through the rest of the tournament. And on the Storm side, you saw a team that, uh, you know, had a few miscues to start the game, got a little bit more comfortable with just against a, a side like Canyon that put on so much defensive pressure and really punished them for every mistake they made. So for them moving forward throughout the game, uh, it is a 26-6, like a big point differential. But every game's a new game, especially in juniors. You know, you're a different person uh, at 8 a.m. versus 12 p.m. So absolutely, absolutely. So thank you everybody for uh, sharing this webcast with us. Thank you, Devon, for your always very, very 
interesting feedback and observation. You, you know, we love you. Oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everybody loves. All you. right, just, stay like, tuned so, for five song. more minutes, yeah, and so, uh, we will see you all back in a bit. We will be back in ten minutes for next uh, next assignment, which will feature chain reaction from Ontario versus Team Manitoba Junior Division. We will be right back. We'll take a short break.